introduce yourself? Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Aniko Kureshi. Uh, I am an associate professor at the University of Amsterdam. Uh, and I have my research group about studying the effects of early life stress uh, on brain function. Can you tell us how early life stress, nutrition, and neuroinflammation interact, and how that can impact psychopathology and intervention strategies? Yeah, sure. So when we think about early life, that's a really critical developmental period during which uh, the brain in particular is growing at the fastest rate of all of our organs. Uh, so we can easily imagine that adversities during this early life uh, period can have really lasting consequences on how our brain will function later in life. Indeed, there is a lot of association between uh, a lot of studies showing that when there is an early life exposure to a trauma or adversity, then uh, there is a strong association with the development of psychopathologies. What is also interesting to realize is that this early life adversity can take many different forms. It can be in the form of trauma or maltreatment, but it can also be in the form of malnutrition, for example. And these two very different forms of adversity, however, lead to a quite comparable uh, phenotype in the development of psychopathologies. So in the last 50, 60 years, there has been a lot of atti attention devoted to the role of stress hormones and sensory stimulation, and I've shown indeed these have really important key roles in, uh, in these processes. However, uh, I took a special interest in nutrition because uh, it struck me that there was a similarity in phenotypes by looking at such a different uh, adversities of nutritional kind and of a very different kind of trauma, for example. In addition, stress and nutrition are tightly interrelated, they affect one another. And uh, finally, there is also a really high rate of comorbidity, for example, of these psychopathologies with metabolic disorders, making us wonder if there might be, for example, some kind of common pathway that we could be looking for. So what we did is uh, we studied this in a, a mouse model of early life stress, me and my team together, and we found that indeed early life stress exposure leads to alteration in nutritional composition of the, of the brain. So there is alteration in methionine and fatty acid composition, and um, we also found uh, several other uh, aspects that are interesting. So when we supplemented the diet during this early life and during the stress exposure, then uh, we find that um, uh, this is protective and we don't see any more the cognitive deficits that we saw earlier. So this is quite striking and interesting to us. Um, when we think of how will these nutrients then have this beneficial effect, there could be many different systems at play. And uh, one of them, for example, is neuroinflammation. Neuroinflammation is uh, one of the systems that are really important and a, a, a disruption in this system is also relevant in many different psychopathologies ranging from depression to Alzheimer's disease. And interestingly, a lot of nutrients have neuromodulatory roles. For example, fatty acids like fish oils, omega-6, omega-3. I'm sure you must be familiar with that. And uh, so when we supplement the diet early in life with a diet that increases the availability of the omega-3, of the good fatty acid, then this is protective. And it doesn't only rescue the cognitive deficit that we saw earlier, but it also rescues the phenotype on the neuroimmune system. This is why I think that uh, nutrition can be a very uh, great, has a great potential to target this population of uh, exposed individuals that have been exposed to real-life adversity early in life, uh, to protect them maybe from developing psychopathologies later in life. Thank you for your talk. It was a pleasure.